three number one books, two best, the second best selling cookbook of all time. Now, when you think of how many cookbooks <coughs> there have been, that's mm, a pretty impressive, impressive credential. I know it's mad. It's really weird seeing them on the on the screen like I kind of forget just how many books I've sold, but. It is mad, isn't it? Just, just using social media without much TV, just kind of building yeah. an audience online and, and sharing free recipes and videos. Did you ever think, when you first started doing it online, did you ever think it would be this massive? No, no one did. And even the publisher, no one predicted it was, you know, mm. I had an idea that people were into what I was doing. I was sharing the free recipes on Instagram and building that, that audience is kind of growing and growing. But you just can't predict that you're going to sell two and a half million books in a year. Mm. Like, who, who does that? It's just it's and, not and what, done, what you what do know? you think makes you different? Because there are loads of people trying to do exactly what you're doing on Instagram. Instagram. So wh why do you think it was you that was the, the, the lucky one? And it is the degree of luck that has ended up being so phenomenally, phenomenally successful. Yes, that's yeah. right. I think, um, I think it just comes down to like the message that I've got yeah. is quite a positive one. It's about, you know, improving. It's not just about looking a certain way. It's about confidence. And <clears throat> I'm saying, you know, you don't have to starve yourself like people do on these diets. It's like, yeah. you know, you can eat fats, you can eat carbohydrates. You don't have to completely like deprive yourself of the food you love. So my whole philosophy is about cooking, you know, healthy, quick recipes that you can do. And if you're really busy, if you're a mum and if you've got kids or you've got, you know, your full time in, in employment and you don't feel like you've got the time, I'm basically saying to people, we've all got 15 minutes in the kitchen and, you know, we can all do but it. In the show. Yeah. They've just discovered that women prefer reading cookery books to Fifty Shades of Grey. Really? Yeah. <laughs> around 35 and upwards what books give you the most pleasure and they decide they've discovered more than thrillers more than biographies more than romantic fiction more than erotic fiction uh, we wow. like reading uh, cookery books oh, no. interesting that's <laughs> <laughs> not that. I don't know it explains a lot though right. yeah it that, explains now literally we, we made your um, your burgers over the weekend and can i just can i just say why i wasn't drawn to them just because of the name can you zoom in on that can you see what that's called it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a McLeany burger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. did, you, did you kind of giggle to yourself? I had yeah. a little giggle to myself. Um, Have you tried Joe's Big Juicy Balls? <laughs> <laughs> Shank Redemption. I, I like giving them funny names, but yeah. And you know, and some people might say that we've got so used as well that over the years, people who come and promote sort of fitness DVDs and what have you, they've been larger and then they've lost an awful lot of weight. You've always been a sort of fit, healthy weight, but you haven't always eaten well. When when you were growing up and you were little, wasn't there a lot of junk food and, and yeah, that sort totally. of thing? Yeah, totally. I, I always, my mum will, will be the first to admit that she can't cook. She never has been able to. Like we. I to, like your mum. I grew up on. Um, <laughs> we'd have pasta with like passata sauce. Sometimes we'd have mints if she could afford to buy a bit of mince, but then she goes, do you want a picnic? So we're like, yeah, and we'd go in the cupboards, always fill up with junk food, like crisps and sandwiches and biscuits and bread. So we'd just make sandwiches and we lived off that. So I know I was buzzing, running around, you know, bouncing off the walls on Sunny Delight and fizzy drinks. And it was only when I really kind of like read about nutrition and understood what good food does to me. Like, I now know that you can live a really healthy life and eat nice food and not feel deprived. Well, I tell you what I was amazed about, that you are responsible for broccoli sales going up 25%. Yeah, apparently. We well, you know I started calling them midget trees, so... Well, that's what they're like, really, aren't they? Midget the little tender stem broccoli. Yeah, it went up by... Apparently, since my book came out, UK sales went up 25%. Wow, so that's, that's fantastic, that. fantastic, that. How did your mum take to being reprogrammed by you? How did you do it in a tactful way? If her cooking was rubbish before, or not rubbish, but unhealthy, when you had to get your mum thinking along your wavelength, how did that go down? Yeah, so my mum's always had issues with eating. She, she, like, she used to live off basic sugar, so she would eat, like, she would drink about six cans of coke a day, always never eat much food, and so I've really kind of got to start cooking her own food. But it's just a habit thing, isn't it? Once you start eating healthy food and you realise that food is, like, really, really great energy for you and can make you feel awesome and it completely drain your energy and make you feel rough. So she now just kind of preps her lunch, makes herself food for work, and she's um, just adopting that, yeah, and getting better and healthier. So now I have a question about energy and things you need energy for. Are you going to do strictly? Oh, how do you know about that? Who told you about that? Who told you I was asked about that? We know everything. We know, we know everything. No secrets, we know about vegetables, Joe. we know about strictly. I was asked, I mean, I was asked, it's just not something I want to do right now, but um, who knows in the future, you never know. But I'm just, I'm too focused on doing what I'm doing with the online stuff and the workouts and trying to get, you know, school kids exercise. And I've, I've got so much to do, and that is a massive time commitment, isn't it, doing that? So um, at the moment, I'm just going to stick to what I do, which is getting everyone leaner. I've got to ask you about your girlfriend. Oh. I'll have it. You're the one that's going to play me. <laughs> 
I know. She was asking me that your girlfriend, you live a very public life, it's on Inst, everything's documented, but yeah, your girlfriend's <laughs> in the background. We're very, yeah, we're quite a bit of a Private. mystery, isn't it? I just feel like I'm literally, I've got my Snapchat and Instagram stories going off all day, every day, and I'm on social media, and I love that, and it's, a, it's really great that I've used it to connect with people, but in terms of me and my girlfriend, I just think it's the one thing, like, we have a completely normal life, like, we walk around, we've never been What's packed her name? or anything. What's her, her name's Rosie. Rosie. Do you do lovely. the cooking, by the way? Or we take, she... She, she does a little bit of cooking, but I, I really enjoy cooking, so I do most of the cooking. But um, I just think it's one thing, like, we, we go on holiday together and we, we post pictures, but we won't post pictures mm. of each other because it's like, let's keep something for the, you know, for our It's private. interesting, isn't it, that people treat it as if you're keeping a secret and you're not. You're just leading a really normal life and doing, you know, if I worked in a bank, I wouldn't be coming in every day talking about my relationship, but just yeah. because you do what you do. I think people assume that you're going to be, like, sharing it and mm. I'm glad you don't stuff. talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> She's never mention her again.